Welcome back, Wargamers. Today I'm going to show you how to make some quick and easy hills using faux fur. Now, they're not going to be the cheapest hills because you have to go out and buy this fur, which I get for about 10 bucks for a yard, which is 3 by 3 feet of fabric, which is quite a bit. You can make 5, 6 hills out of it. But anyways, it's really easy because if you've seen my method of making a fur mat, Painting and blending this faux fur is really quick, really easy, and unlike the traditional methods of carving foam, covering it in spackle, uh, dry brushing, and then adding you know rocks and things and, and different flock, it can take a long time to get a decent looking hill. And this method is really quick, you can even put it together while the fur is still drying. So I, I carved out my foam just like you would for any traditional hill. I took two layers of pink foam, uh, carved it out, sanded it down as you see here. I kind of have a bigger hill and a smaller hill. And what I'm going to use is this, it's called grizzly bear fur, which you can get uh, at Joann's or any fabric store. And I'm just going to use this just like the faux fur mat. I'm going to paint it and cut it out glue it to the hill, and you'll have a really quick rolling hill for your grassland terrain. All right, it, For me, at least, this is many times quicker than using spackle and grit to make your hills. So I'll just go in my process of how I paint the fur and the kind of the end result. So the first thing, I want this fur to be actually pretty closely cropped. I'm actually going to cut it even closer down than my wargaming mat because it's, you know, you want figures to be able to stand on your hills. You don't want to make them too steep so that they fall over. And also for this, you don't want the length of the fur to be, you know, so long that your men have a hard time standing up in it. All right. So both are those considerations you have to make when you're making any sort of hill. Just have to worry about the length of the grass when you're dealing with the faux fur. So I'm going to cut it very, very short. All right, you just want a little little bit of it poking up, a little bit of length to it, especially on the sides, kind of leaving the sides a little bit longer. So hopefully when I'm done, they'll kind of blend into the table. So just going over it here with uh, some, I think it's dog grooming clippers. If you have scissors, you can do the same thing. It'll just, of course, take a lot longer. All right, so once I'm done with the uh, kind of shaving my fur down a little bit. I'm going to be painting with my brush here and a comb. Those are kind of my methods for this. So I'll, I kind of squirt some paint on, brush it around, and then I use the comb to blend different colors. So I'll start off here with kind of a darker green, which I'm just going to put a little bit down on the fur. And then I'm going to use my brush to spread it around. And then I'm going to get a lighter green and put it next to it. That's kind of how I do this. I take a dark color, put it next to a light color, so different shades of greens and yellows, putting it next to each other. Because if you look at any any sort of grassland, you'll see many different shades of greens and yellows blending into one another. So that's what I'm trying to simulate here. Um, so putting these greens and yellows all across the fur, and this and this is a pretty pretty quick process all together. I think it took me about 10 minutes from start to finish, which is not bad, all right? Because this is really the only thing you need to do. And then glue it onto uh, to your foam, and you are done. So it's so, so quick, and you get a pretty decent result in the end. So I'll just continue blending it. You know, the comb is actually the best tool for blending this. The final step in painting the fur is to put a little bit of yellow and almost dry brushed over the top of the fur. So I'm taking here like a light, almost mustard yellow, and I'll use my comb, as I have been doing throughout this process, to then blend that yellow into uh, the entirety of the fur, and it gives a more subtle gradation of color between the greens and the yellows, ties it all together, and in the end, we have a pretty realistic looking grassland. So the last thing I need to do is glue this down. I tried using PVA. Don't use PVA. It just soaks through the fur and makes a mess. Instead, use a hot glue gun. It'll make your life easier. So just put hot glue around the edges. It takes only a moment. And you have your hill pretty much done. And now you're going to see me do something, which in the end I regretted here. I'm going to start trimming the edges of the fur which ended up not looking the best when I put it on the table. I trimmed it around and it kind of gave like a stark edge 
to my hill when I put it on my uh, on my table. So if I were to do this again, I probably would leave a little bit of an overhang of the fur. I wouldn't cut it so close to the foam, because as you'll see, it, it, there's kind of a stark transition from the table to the hill, which in the end I didn't really like. I might have to mount this onto some foam board and mess with it to get a, the look that I like. So if you're doing this on your own, you know, here's me trying to cover up the fact like, oh my god, this doesn't really look how I want it to look. Um, but if you do this on your own, allow a little bit of an overhang of the fur and it will look a lot better. So here's the finished product. And outside the mistake I made there at the end of trimming the fur a little too much, I do like how this turned out. And really the greatest aspect of this terrain is it is so quick to make. You know, the carving of the foam is really the only time intensive part, but you have to do that regardless when you're making hills. Um, but the painting of the fur took 10 minutes gluing it down another few so you can crank out a hill in about 15 minutes and if you paint up a large piece of fur you can make five six hills in an hour you know can't beat that as far as time efficiency for making these things and if you're making a grassland board i really do think faux fur just gives the best impression of grass i don't think there's any more realistic way of making your terrain so there you go hopefully if you are looking to Make some rolling hills of your own. You can go out and get some faux fur and crank out a bunch of hills in no time at all. I, I think I'll make a few more hills and I'll remember, you know, to maybe not cut them so, uh, so close to the foam there. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'll be back soon. If you liked it, please do subscribe and I will see you soon.